So it's 2.3 macromolecules. Be talking about some different things with macromolecules. First thing, we're going to look at the key elements that are found in all living things. Here they are, sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. All of them are found in different quantities, but these are considered the most important elements found in living things. And you'll notice they spell the handy-dandy acronym SPONCH, which is a nonsense word, but you'll probably remember it that way. And so that can be helpful. Carbon, in particular, is very important because carbon forms kind of a backbone for lots of macromolecules for all of them in fact um, the reason it's able to do that is because it is tetravalent what that means is think of the two words tetra means four valent speaks of the outer electrons that are able to form bonds and so carbon is able to form bonds with four other atoms or other molecules so this gives carbon a lot of versatility this allows carbon to kind of form the structural backbone of the macromolecules that we're going to be talking about We've used this word macromolecule a lot. What is it? Well, it literally means large molecule. There are four classes of macromolecules that we'll talk about in class. There are carbohydrates. These are things like sugars. There are lipids. These are like fats. There are proteins. These are things like proteins. And nucleic acids. This is like DNA, RNA, and the different things that we're going to study with those. And so... Let's continue talking about a little bit about mon our macromolecule structure. Uh, macromolecules are made up of individual units called monomers. Prefix M or mono means one, and you combine monomers together to make polymers. A monomer is able to function on its own. We'll talk a lot about different monomers that are able to do their own thing, depending on the type of macromolecule. And when they combine, those properties change. And so you have a single monomer, say like glucose, when you combine it with other glucose, it becomes a starch. And a starch has a different kind of property than a glucose by itself. And so it's an important idea. Well, how do you combine monomers into polymers? Well, it's these two reactions. These two reactions are important. All macromolecule classes, carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids follow these rules. There are two reactions. First one's called dehydration synthesis. Think of those two words. Dehydration means to pull water out of something. Synthesis needs to means to combine two things. And so in this case, with dehydration synthesis, it's the combination of two monomers in which water is removed and the two monomers are combined to make a polymer. Pretty simple. And the next is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the opposite of that. Hydro, water, lysis. Anytime you see that word, it's going to have to do with breaking something down. Think of like the chemical that we have, Lysol. What's the purpose of Lysol? It's to kill bacteria. How does it do that? By breaking them down. We have a lysosomes inside of our cells. They break things down. And so hydrolysis has to do with breaking down things using water. So in this case, water is going to be added to a polymer, and it's going to cause that polymer to split into individual monomers and it could be the case that you have a polymer that's split into individual polymers as well depending on the size of the molecule you're dealing with but here in these pictures it's just real simple big idea dehydration synthesis makes things combined hydrolysis splits things up one of them takes water out the other adds water macromolecule shape very important notice all the shapes carbs have a shape lipids have a shape proteins have a shape nucleic acids also have a shape and the shape of these molecules determines their function. The shapes are not arbitrary, and those shapes uh, will determine the way that that molecule behaves with other molecules and how it works in living systems, especially when we start talking about three-dimensional molecules like proteins and some other things. The shape of that molecule determines its function. What are functions of macromolecules? Here's some functions of macromolecules. So I kind of lumped a bunch of them together. We're going to talk about each one of these. We're going to talk about carbs and lipids one day. We're going to talk about proteins and nucleic acids the next day. And so I kind of lumped all of their functions into one big blob. And so you're going to have to know the difference between them. But if you needed to just have a function page for all of them, here it is. Energy storage and transfer. This is mostly going to be carbs and lipids. Uh, structural support, um, I think all of them, except nucleic acids, would apply here. 
temperature regulation um, depends on how you know, depends on the organism. But uh, being able to regulate temperature by burning energy, or storing energy, there's lots of ways to regulate temperature. Enzymatic function. This is primarily going to be proteins, but it could also be uh, nucleic acids as well. Um, homeostasis. All of them are going to be involved in homeostasis, which is maintaining uh, body function norms and storage and transfer of information. This is what nucleic acids do best. They store um, and transfer hereditary information. They do the information being stored is about proteins, but the actual storage of that information is something that only nucleic acids can do.